Hey y'all, welcome to episode 17 of Motivation With Me. So, first things first, okay? Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Because if you're not subscribed, then you're childish. But make sure you subscribe because we have more videos coming. I'm going to start dropping videos every week. Be proud, okay, because I want to get my YouTube channel on and popping. Secondly, we are not going to discuss the bump that's going on in my lip right now. So, ignore that. Don't worry about that. Stay out of my business. Um, So, I wanted to start a series called the We Matter series, okay, which is pretty much Black Lives Matter. But I changed it up a little bit because I want to do, at first I was just going to do one video. But then when I realized exactly how much information is involved in African American lives, the importance of black history, just racism, mass incarceration, when I realized how much that we have to talk about, I was like, you know what, this is going to have to be a series, like, it's going to have to be like single, save, and celibate. We're going to have to go with it. So I created the We Matter series. By we, I mean us, melanin, and everything. So let's get into we. First, things first. I want to make sure, and this is just a short list. This is nowhere near the amount of people that have been killed or brutalized by the police. Okay, so this is just a short list list and I want to hashtag say their names okay so starting with Rodney King March 3rd 1991 he was brutally beat by the police which caused the LA 92 riots Jordan Davis November 2012 who also there is a documentary actually on his story called three and a half seconds three and a half seconds and ten bullets so make sure you guys check that out I'm gonna try and put all of the resources in the description some good documentaries you can check out some articles you can read some YouTube videos so be looking out for those in the description throughout the series Trayvon Martin February 26 2012 Kendry McDade March 24th 2012 Kamani Gray March 9th 2013 Eric Garner July 17, 2014, Michael Brown, August 9, 2014, Natasha McKenna, February 3, 2015, Walter Scott, April 4, 2015, Freddie Gray, April 12, 2015, Christian Taylor, August 17, 2015, Samuel Du Bois, July 19, 2015, Philando Castile, July 6, 2016, Jordan Edwards, April 29, 2017, Ahmad Aubrey, February 23rd, 2020, and Brianna Taylor, March of my, and I always remember this one because it's March 13th, with this, which is the day before my dad passed away, March 13th, 2020, and as we know, George Floyd happened in 2020. So those are just a few. We did not include Sandra Bland, Tamir Rice. We, I mean, literally, we can do this all day because that's how long the list is of our young black women and men who have been killed or brutalized by the police. This is ridiculous. So we going. We started off by saying their names, and we need to continue to say their names. We need to continue to remember these young men and women who have lost their lives because the police decided that our lives don't matter and they're going to destroy us. They're going to kill us. They have the right to do anything that they want to us without consequence, which brings me to statistics. Okay. In 2016, there were 509 deaths of police brutality. 24% of those were black. But check it, it's only 13% black people in the United States. Literally, African Americans make up 13% in the United States. Twenty-eight 
24% of 509 deaths and we only make up 13%. White people, 76% in the U.S. Okay. Between 2013 and 2019, 1,944 people were killed. 3% of the cops who killed them got charged. Less than 1% convicted. Really? Really? But are we surprised? Are, are we surprised? No, we're not. We're not surprised at all. Because this is, and this is just minor statistics. The population in the U.S. for 2020 was 331 million, roughly. And I'm rounding that. 331 million. Okay? 76% white people. So that's roughly 251 million. 1,692 white people were killed of that 251 million. That percentage is point zero 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 six three per, six seven three percent Okay. Black people make up 13% of that 331 million. So we make up 43 million. 909 people killed by police. 0.000212%. So why, why are you giving us these statistics, Miranda? What's the point? The point is because if you Google, and people use this as a defense, if you Google the amount of white people to black people that were killed by police, the number of white people is higher on first glance. But what we fail to realize is that there is math involved. So while the number of black people that were killed by the police may be lower, hence the 1600 versus the 900, no. Don't be quick, well, the cops killed 1600 white people and they only killed 909 black people. We only make up 13% of the US population. Y'all make up 76%. Do the math. Stop looking at the numbers and do the math. Black people are three times more likely to die from police brutality than white people. Why? Why is the question. Why? There are so many answers to that question. And I really see I'm stepping out of my comfort zone with this because I particularly do not debate or talk about these topics with people because I had to learn to control my level of irritation and my level of anger when it comes to talking about these things because people have their own opinions and sometimes the opinion, the, their opinions just make absolutely no sense. Sometimes their statements make absolutely no sense. They're not going to always agree with you. And then I got to the point where I said, you know what, fuck it. My opinion is my opinion. My YouTube channel is my YouTube channel. My voice is my voice. So I'm going to say how I feel, what I feel about it, whether you agree with it or not. There's people who are going to dislike this video. There might be a privileged white person a racist white person who may see this video and say something racist in the comments please know that you will delete be deleted because you will not come to motivation with me with that fuckery because i see these videos i've watched so many documentaries in the past month they have a documentary on george floyd and brianna taylor really good sad but really informative and really good i look in the comments nothing but racism Nothing but racism. And you have those type of people, especially now because Trump's not in office and Biden's in office. So now everybody's mad. Now the racism and the, and the, the asshole, privileged ass, angry white people are start, starting to come out. They they starting to come out. Y'all seen that shit with the Capitol? Come, come on. Let that have been, let that have been black folk. Let that have been black people. Nah. 
we would have been dead. We wouldn't have got across the barrier. We wouldn't have been let that happen us. And if you watch and pay attention to protests and rioting and all the things that are going on, okay, we don't act like that. We don't act like that. First of all, we're standing for something. We're standing for us. For us. We're standing for us. And peacefully protesting. Yes, sometimes it does get a little wild. Because we're angry. But we're standing for something. We're not sitting here storming the Capitol. Sitting at people's desks with our feet up. Waving around Confederate flags. Having weapons. Saying racist shit on camera. We're we not, we, we not doing that. And I actually just watched another documentary where there's like a TikTok compilation of police officers standing with protesters. Gonna drop that link as well. Very good, very good video. I like that. And the reason why this is has been in the past a controversial topic for me is because my uncle, my dad's brother, is a sergeant and has been my whole life. He has been a cop my whole life. So, and it's people like, give me a minute. Let me, cause see, I see me trying to control my anger. There's people like this motherfucker whose name ain't even worth mentioning that killed George Floyd that make cops like my uncle look bad. That make good cops look bad. If you have not watched Soul of a Nation on Hulu, check it out. First episode. It, it The black man, a black cop who was at the Capitol told his story. Watch it. That man deserves the death penalty. Period. He deserves the death penalty off the rip. And watching the documentary, I had not seen the George Floyd video until I watched the documentary. And this was a couple weeks ago. Because I couldn't bear to watch it. I, I couldn't I, I couldn't do it. But it was in the documentary and I was like, you know what? Let me let me just let me just watch it. Cause at first I couldn't I couldn't do it. And with the Breonna Taylor documentary, it was they didn't show the actual shooting. They just showed the footage of her house afterwards. And even that was just I had to pause and I'm like, I Watching her friends and her family and her mom get on there and literally talk about her and cry. And this this lady is still fighting for justice. We, we still fighting for justice. Why? Why is it that police can get away with doing what the fuck they want to do to our people? No, we matter. Black lives matter. And in this series, we're going to talk beyond the BLM movement. We're going to talk beyond police brutality. I want to go into the Khalif Browder story. I want to go into mass incarceration. I want to go into racism in Karens. That's what I want to go into. I want to bring my uncle on and we can get his perspective. So I had to make this a series. And the Black Lives Matter movement, when people say well all lives matter we've heard that right that's bullshit because we're not saying all lives don't matter we're saying black lives matter because clearly to y'all we don't matter we're disposable you could just kill us and get away with it you could just be racist to us and get away with it you can call the cops on us and get away with it when we when we die when we get killed when my daddy was murdered in 2004 by a black woman. Cops came on the scene. She didn't get arrested. You know what they did? He was in the back of a eight, in the back of a truck, shot six times laying there. Cowboy with a gold tooth, gold chain, belt buckle and some boots. Looked at him. Oh, it's just another dead black thug. Excuse? I'm sorry, what? So you automatically assume that my dad was a thug who put his hands on this woman so that he, he deserved to die. And I have to assume had you have showed up and he not been dead, you would have killed him. Every time 
my boyfriend, any of my brothers, any of my black men, even that those that I don't know, any of my kids in, in the trouble movement walk outside that door, their life is in danger. Anytime we, us as black women, walk outside that door, our life is in danger. As if we don't have to already face enough when it comes to opportunities, entrepreneurship, loans, homeowning. As if we don't already have to face enough struggle. Y'all don't hear me though. Y'all y'all don't hear me though. And the question is, what do we do? What do we do? And that's a whole video in itself. What do we do? What actions do we take? Protesting. Me particularly, I have not been to a protest. But I will. It's not that I don't want to go. I just never been to one. But I choose to help my community and my black people by creating a platform and an organization for young black teenagers that I can give positive influence to, that we can teach to do better, that we can inform them of the things that are going on and have been going on for years in our country because they may not be learning that at home. They damn sure ain't learning it in school. Because this bullshit black history that they giving in school, this ain't it. This ain't it. We need to know about our history, but we also need to know about our present. We also need to know what's going on in society right now. This generation is the next one. They, the, the millennials, the, we, we the next ones. We the ones that have to make the change. And we are making change. Black Lives Matter, that movement isn't the first movement. It's one of many movements. But we have to keep that going and create our own movements. That's how the trouble movement got started. Because I kept saying it's a movement. And it is. Because it's going to make an impact on my community. Because I'm in my community fighting for my community, for my black community community for my under, underserved community because they ain't worried about us they privileged they don't they don't know the struggle and i went to the slowed and throw museum exhibit for dj screw and there was a young lady who came in uh, sorry a white lady who came in with her husband and her two little kids they didn't have mask on the guy said politely can you put your mask on she taking her time. She don't wanna she don't wanna pull out the mask. She she just like he said, can you put your mask? You got you gotta step outside till you put your mask on. Now we know this asshole governor then then lifted the mask mandate. He just like, you know, that's just like giving the torch to the white folks. Oh well shit, we ain't gotta wear no mask. The bullshit you walk up in this museum, you're gonna have to put a mask on. The dude at the at the counter was black. You walking into and they was coming to the DJ screw exhibit. See, I ain't even go there. But the lady, everybody got to take their temperature. Her two little kids, you're not taking their temperature. He's under eight years old. Bitch, if you don't get up there and take that motherfucking temperature. And so the dude was like, you know what? I don't even want no, I don't want no problems. Just, just, okay. Because I ain't finna lose my job over your fuck shit. And he was like, but he has to keep his mask on. He has his mask on. He's he he has it on. Hold on, sis. So me and my aunt, my cousin, looking at each other, and we bust out laughing. I was like, it took everything in, in us not to say nothing. And my aunt said something that really touched me. See, she's big on this this whole culture thing. She's a, this is her topic. This is her life. This is what she lives, breathes, and does. And she explained it to me, and she said, you know what? White people are so used to being privileged and not being told what to do or being forced to do something that now that they're forced to wear a mask, they try to play the I'm oppressed role. Because now you have to put a mask on. So now somebody forcing you to do something you don't want to do. You don't like that shit, huh? You don't like feeling trapped. You don't like feeling oppressed. 
You don't like that mask covering your goddamn face. I'm sorry, you can't breathe? Is that what it, can you not breathe? Oh, welcome to our fucking world. Because I could have swore George Floyd said the same shit. So you take your privileged ass to fuck out this museum if you don't want to follow the rules. You and your eight-year-old son can go back to where y'all came from because you walk in here, you got to put a mask on. You walk in any other places that are requiring masks, your ass going to put a mask on, whether you like it or not. So that line right there, that explanation, it touched me. I was in that museum, and as you'll see on this flyer, the first thing that caught my eye was that picture of Rodney King getting brutalized by the police. I'm, it, I'm talking about just stop me in my tracks. And it brought back so much. I was It's just signs. Like I kept getting signs that I had to talk about this. I had to remind people that we matter in a series because there's so many different things to talk about. Police brutality, say their names, Black Lives, Black Lives Matter movement, that's, that's just the beginning. That's not even all of what we go through as African-American men and women. I had somebody tell me one day, I do accounting. I have a bookkeeping company. I do accounting for a restaurant downtown owned by white people. I had somebody straight up tell me, they let a little black girl do their accounting? I'm, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, because this black woman, first of all, I ain't no little black girl. This black woman has two degrees in accounting and three businesses and a nonprofit. So, yes, they do. They trust me because I'm smart. Don't think because of the color of my skin and my gender that I can't do what you can do. And I'm pretty sure I can do it better than you. I was so taken back. And you know what? <laughs> this the killer part. You know what really fucked with me? It was a black person who said it. Which is another video coming. On why we need to stick together. And what's stopping us from sticking together together because we are doing exactly what they want us to do we are going at each other's throats on what to do how to handle it what's right what's wrong we want to judge this we want to do this we black people are so separated like can we come together why we got to come together and protest when somebody die can we come together and prevent it? Can we come together and make a change? Can we do that instead of tearing each other down, which is exactly what they want us to do? Y'all do realize that that's their mission, to tear us apart. And we're letting them do it. Again, that's another video. That's a whole another video. So what do we do is the question. You do what you feel led to do. Whether it's protesting, whether it's doing what I'm doing right now, using your voice and creating a platform, whether it's creating or starting something for African Americans, whether it's supporting, supporting, supporting a black business or black organization. It's free to hit the like button. It's free to subscribe to this channel. It's free to share this video. It's free to comment. Why you ain't did it? I'm not understanding. There are multiple ways. You can do advocacy work in your community. We got to do better. You can vote, especially locally. That's important. We got an asshole of a governor. Vote. Quit playing. Because these are the people that make decisions. We have to change from the inside from the outside and the inside. Change comes from within. We have to prove to them that we are capable of doing the same thing as white people. 
But y'all, see, y'all don't hear me though. But y'all gonna hear me for the rest, for the rest, every week, every week, I'm coming out with a new video. And I pose the question on Facebook that's gonna go into my next video. I said, what are the first words that come to your mind when you hear police brutality? And I asked my boyfriend that question and his first thing he said was, don't shoot my hands up. Don't shoot. My hands are up. Because every time our hands are up, why we got to do this? Why we got to walk around like this? Why we got to pull, get pulled over because of the car we drive? Why we got to get yanked out the car or better yet shot in the car? Why do you feel like you got to pull your gun out? I'm just grabbing my license. Then you ask me for license and registration? Or you probably didn't do that. You just pulled your gun out. Hmm? If I'm sitting there like this, I'm clearly no threat to you. You're killing me because you're racist and because you want to. That man sat, that man put his knee on George Floyd's neck for nine goddamn motherfucking minutes. And if you watch the video, when the when the paramedics got there, this man's knee was still on his goddamn neck. The paramedics had to move him off like, bruh, you can let go. You can get the fuck up. We here. He's still leaning on this nigga neck. Still got his knee in his shit. Clearly, the man said he can't breathe. He want his mama. And then you got the other cop standing in front like he a fucking lookout nigga. Like he a lookout boy. The fuck? Get, give him master. Give him the chair. Electrocute him. Don't even give him the injection. Just, just electrocute him. That shit don't make no sense. And that was one of the biggest protests internationally. And they need to throw his ass under the jail. But we'll see. We'll see. Because the latest, the latest uh, article I read, they still picking the goddamn jury. Throw that man under that goddamn jailhouse and quit playing with me. Quit, play, quit playing with us. So, again, I say this is going to be a series. I try to keep my videos short. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. That's just the beginning. Say their names. I'm giving you statistics. I'm giving you facts. I'm giving you emotion. I'm giving you anger. Again, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone because it's some topics that I choose not to speak on. I'd rather just do something about it. But then it gets to a point where you know what Miranda God gave you a voice, he gave you a platform, he gave you a YouTube channel. You need to use it. You need to use your voice. Your voice is powerful. You are powerful. I am powerful. We as black people, men and women, are powerful. Use that power that is within you. Use the power to fight the privilege. Come on. So that's that's part one. <laughs> that's part one. But trust me, there's many more parts to come. And if you have any specific topics or a specific question that you want to ask, please feel free to feel free to drop it in the comments. But I will tell you, you come in my comments with that bullshit, you're getting deleted. Learn something. Like, comment, and subscribe. Because it's a lot of information that's coming. It's a video every week that you need to hear. You need some motivation. You need to listen. You need to pay attention. And that's that on that. Or as that's or what's the new what's the new phrase? That's on Mary had a little lamb. I don't, I can't keep up with this. <laughs> like I can't keep up with the with the new words, but that's that on that. So again, thank you. This is episode seven seventeen. Look at me. I'm tripping. Y'all listen, it's it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm doing this. Um this is episode seventeen of motivation with me.